It looks beautiful out here. Man, the water. The water looks good out here. It's not as clear as on other parts of the lake. It just looks so healthy. So we're out here at Lake Mead. This portion of the lake, we haven't shown much, but this is Echo Bay, like heading towards Moapa. Very nice out here. A couple different species of fish are out here that normally aren't in the rest of the lake. So uh, we're gonna see what we can do out here. Have a little bit of fun. Weather's beautiful, two mile an hour winds. If that, the water looks like glass, it's gonna be great. Beautiful day. Might use that, who knows. Welcome back to another day out here at Lake Mead. Now, this is a part of the lake that you guys may have never seen before. People that have followed our channel for years and years, they've seen it a long time ago. This is a completely different arm of Lake Mead. So a lot of filming we do at Lake Mead and a lot of other YouTubers in the news and everybody updating everything is all in the Boulder Basin. Now, one thing a lot of people might forget is just how big this lake is. Lake Mead is still the biggest man-made reservoir in all of North America, and I think even ranked in the whole world as one of the biggest. So this is up here on the Overton Arm. We just launched at Echo Bay. This is all the way on the northern end of the lake. The Muddy River runs into this section. Not a lot of people have been out here checking it out. We're gonna give a boots on ground, and we're also gonna do a little bit of exploring. What are you thinking? I'm thinking we're gonna have a great time. There's a lot of things that we haven't filmed. I can see a boat over there. So there's gonna be different boats, different things to check out. Let's just go have some fun. I think I took a picture in that boat years ago, acting like I was racing in it. It used to be a lot closer to the water's edge, though you could kind of see that thing was all the way at the water's edge not too long ago. Big largy on that point back there. Did you catch it? <laughs> I got stuck. Oh, uh, Smalley picked it up. Oh, Smalley? First fish of the day. I was stuck for like a couple minutes. I didn't even go back to it. <laughs> yeah, you're wow. stuck. Tom, we ain't even got the fish finders on or nothing yet. That's literally the boat launch right there. Already catching fish. He's not the biggest, but he is a fish. Good start. You were stuck behind a rock and he got you unstuck. That's yeah. pretty crazy. He picked it up and got me. Appreciate that. Let's get you back in the water. That's cool. Thank <laughs> you. Can you see him? Yeah. What was he holding? A shad or a carp? Yeah, he's holding a shad. A big old shad. All right, this is crazy. Fish number three, and we haven't even gone 100 yards from the launch at this rate we're gonna catch about 50 fish today <laughs> yeah we barely even started this section of the lake though is interesting because when you get really big bodies of water every different section of the lake like this one's got three major arms and a main lake as i like to call it each different section of the lake kind of behaves differently they got kind of different fish different water clarities different water types stuff like that right here the water clarity is probably about five to six feet deep right here. So not super clear. Water is 61 degrees, a little bit colder. A lot of people are familiar with this area. This was a very, very popular party destination back in the day, back in the 90s and stuff. Here at Echo Bay, there used to be a really nice marina way up there on the mountains that had hotel rooms that were waterfront. They could go to little bars and stuff and drink and have a good time. And uh, all that is long gone. So this is a big part of the lake that many people might not be familiar with. If you guys have been coming to Lake Mead since the 90s, you're probably very familiar with this area. So up in that general area up there, used to be Overton. Now, Overton was a beautiful marina, lots of stuff to do, really deep waters, and now you can't even see it. I mean, I don't even know where it's at from here. Uh, it's probably over there somewhere, way over there, but it's not even close to the water anymore. It's long gone. And this right here is the Muddy River, and the Muddy River feeds into Lake Mead through this little spot, and it actually brings in a lot of debris and stuff. That's why the water is kind of so murky around here. You can see all the stuff floating around in the water there was actually some logs floating in the water which for lake mead isn't very common to have any sort of like logs or anything you've got to watch out for and you can see right here where we're at how much farther the lake used to go that way and uh as you can see it doesn't go very far anymore that's the end of it pretty much so overton back in the day where you guys used to party and come out here and rent boats and have a good time was way over there it's long long gone nowadays 
but it's still a very unique and cool area to get out here and see. We don't come out here too often. Should probably come more often because the fishing is incredible out on this side of the lake. But so when they say the water has gone up a foot, imagine that. It took us about 45 minutes just to drive out here. So you're talking this lake is 60, what is it, 65 miles long or something like that. It raises a foot. That's a lot of water. That's a ton of water. It's gone down a hundred feet in the last <laughs> 20 yeah. years. Now that's a lot of water. So we're talking just massive amounts of water. So check out these charts real quick. A lot of you guys say to kind of explain more of the fishing part. So out of this entire lake right here, you have to figure out where you want to go. So when you're bass fishing, you want to hit up points. So a lot of these points that come out shad, are going to be traveling along these points so those are good ambush points for like bass and stuff so we're going to hit all the points first check them out and we'll start from there this spot back here looks amazing it's crazy i don't know what would cause like the rocks to do this kind of formation it almost looks like a tectonic plate tectonic plate got a snagfish <laughs> a, a tectonic plate kind of just shot straight upward and made this formation but this area all the rocks are like almost like a clay they look real reddish, orange reddish, and you can see they just are going straight up. That's pretty impressive. That's like, that's neat looking. You don't see that everywhere. What's your theory? Because all science is theory, right? What's your theory about this spot? I don't know. That's a lot of thinking right now. I'm trying to fish, but if I had to guess, it just came up. <laughs> a, te <laughs> a tectonic plate just shot upward and created this formation. Trillions of tons of rock. You think they just rubbed each other and came up like that? Come on. <laughs> Rocks rubbing each other, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't believe in science. So I believe in creation. This was all created here. Yeah, that's crazy though, because you got spots where this is going literally straight up at almost a 90 degree angle. And then at these spots, they're sloped like 45 degrees. And then over there, it's just flat. So it's literally just like this one spot got uplifted and went straight up. Pretty crazy. Got one. Little striper. A little fun to catch. Ah, we they're want. sharp little guys. Yeah, little, little striper. Not what we want to see right now, but we're getting closer, right? <laughs> Here we go. Get this little bass. This guy's probably two and a half pounder. Nice little guy. I told you the crappie. Nice. Beautiful crappie. I'll show you guys what I'm using in a minute. I had to put the Mexican hat on. It's kind of hot out here now. Nothing special. Just a little jig head with something colorful. Something small and colorful, that, that's all. Pinks, yellows. Hey, oh my goodness. <laughs> They're crappie. This guy put up a fight. That's a good crappie right there, man. That's a monster. Put him in the tank. That's pretty much it for today on the water. This is a super nice area of the lake. All throughout the nation, a lot of really big lakes are like this you'll start to see differences on each side of the lake. This side of the lake is completely different than the Boulder Basin where we normally fish. It has something unique, it has crappie. So that's what we were fishing for today. And we did pretty good. Caught some small bass and uh, quite a bit of crappie. So if you guys don't know and you're not familiar with it, crappie are amazing eating. They're excellent table fare. Uh, we also got one little catfish. That's pretty much it. So we're gonna do a good little catch and cook on them. What we were using to catch crappie are little crappie jigs. So you see this little thing, all colorful. The tentacles are tangled up right now, but it's all colorful. Chartreuse and different colors like that. Little stuff like this that are small are what you catch crappie on. That was a pretty good day out there, wasn't it? Yeah, it's pretty good. Got Some a crappie. bad knee. Anybody that's ever been airborne, you know you got bad knees. You know, you know it's the best heel for that. Tequila. <laughs> Tequila and some fresh fish. All right, let's go. This is what we ended up catching, let's see. Oh yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six crappie that we kept and a, a little catfish. We're gonna cook those up tomorrow for the fights. Garcia versus uh, Tank. Yeah. We're gonna go ahead and take care of these guys, get up out of here, 
And then uh, a catch and cook is coming to you. Like I said, crappie are one of my favorite fish to eat on this whole planet. Especially nice and uh, cold water crappie. When you catch them when it's like a really warm lake, sometimes they can be a little mushy. But these Lake Mead crappie, there's nothing like them. If you guys came out here in the 90s and stayed out here by Echo Bay, this place probably looks like a fraction of what it used to. They used to have spots right there, it looks like where you can sit out and overlook the water. If you could see that line over there, that's where back in the 90s the water was. So this whole place was waterfront property and just, just beautiful. They had the old fish cleaning station here, that's still in use actually. And then here's the old boat launch. Water's way down there. And now it's just a ghost town, so it's pretty interesting to see all that stuff though. So on the way home, we wanted to show really quick just how beautiful the drive is. Scenery around Lake Mead is amazing. So to start off cooking, I cut up some tomatoes, some lettuce, cut a lemon in half. These are some of the stuff we'll need. To season the fish, I use some sea salt, black pepper, and some cayenne pepper. Throw a little bit of spice on those fish. So our audio messed up for some reason. That's why I got a voice over this cooking. But to cook them, threw a little bit of butter on our blackstone. Big flat griddle. And I threw some minced garlic in that butter as it's melting. It kind of seasons that butter up and makes it taste good. So we threw the fish onto the hot butter. And I like to put some lemon on top of all the pieces as they're cooking. And uh, these things cook really fast. It just takes a couple minutes when your grill's nice and hot. So you wanna watch them close and take them off when they're ready. Now, we also like to season our bread a little bit. They'll put it in the real thick spots of the butter, but just enough to get that nice little char to them and good flavor. All right, you can see our plate full of delicious crappie. So what we're gonna do, we've got our little toasted bread. We've got ourselves some tartar sauce. And then you get yourself some fish, just like this. I think that was enough tartar sauce, G? This one's yours. Yeah, that's good. That's good? Okay, now over here, just lettuce. G doesn't like tomatoes, so we're gonna go ahead and throw them on some lettuce here. We've got one mighty fine crappie sandwich, so Juju's gonna do the honors. See, somebody said in the comments that they pronounce it crappy on the East Coast. Crappy. It just sounds weird though, you're eating a crappy sandwich. <laughs> that's pretty good for being crappy. Over here we said crappie. Maybe it's all over my lips. It's good. It's really <laughs> good. I like it a lot. Crappie's always one of the best fish. So you said someone said they pronounce it crappy instead of crappie? On the, on the East Coast, they oh, say crappy. We say crappie over here. Yeah, because when you say crappy, you're losing before you taste it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there went one little. Uh, <laughs> there went one piece of bread. This one's for senior. Let's do it. All right. This thing was swimming around yesterday. Yeah. what we got going on here. Just about as fresh as it gets right there. The bread is charred perfectly. Perfectly? First thing. The fish is cooked just right. Lemon added to it and everything. Yeah, it's just it's good. What would you what rate it saying? out of 10? If I went to a restaurant and I didn't know who cooked this and I had this, I would say a 10. You think a 10? All the way up that high? I would say a 10, yeah. The fish is just good. I've been to Red Lobster. I've been to other places where I get the blackened. What do they usually have? Cod? And it tastes all right. This is better than that. Or the Way black better. and catfish and stuff like that. Black and catfish, black and cod. This is a lot better. So, is it? Give it a ten. That's good. All right, Juju's over there, cuddling with old Scooby. <laughs> it's good. I think it's a ten too. It's one of the best crop I've ever had. Ten it's out of ten. Of, it's one of the softest fish. Oh wow. We had a casualty. Scooby Dooby, you get a little treat too. <laughs> Sounds right. crunchy, huh? Yeah, Sounds crunchy. <laughs> He's gonna gain five pounds after this. A lot of carbs. Man, that crappie was good. In my opinion, crappie's one of the best eaten freshwater fish by far. There's very few things to match it, and you can't really go wrong however you cook it, whether it's fried, sauteed, baked, grilled, whatever. It tastes just good. So if you guys ever get the chance, you guys definitely gotta try it. But I really do appreciate you guys for watching. As always, I'm very thankful to everybody who shows support with the merch. You guys have been awesome with that lately, and I can't thank you guys enough. But we have some cool stuff still coming in the future. We just finished up a collab with another YouTuber. I'm not gonna tell you guys who it is yet. They're out east, I've known them for years. Awesome guy, and uh, we took him out to Lake Mead, 
and just showed them around the lake and did some cool stuff out there. So that'll be coming out very soon. But I really do thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys are looking forward to the future content. We're excited at what we're gonna do this year. It looks like an awesome year so far. There's a lot of potential, some real big fish being caught, and we've got a lot of rain for this coming fall. I really do appreciate you guys for watching. I thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you outdoors.